pause because every single time I hit record, people outside make a whole bunch of noise. All right, so it's Wednesday. Uh, actually, it's Tuesday when I'm shooting this. It's um, the end of February, but I'm trying to get way, way ahead on stuff because I've got work and and uh, and hopefully by the time uh, this airs, I'll, I'll have results for all my health problems I've been having of late. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> trying to stay ahead of the schedule. Um, and my, uh, a movie I've wanted to talk about for a really long time, uh, one I've mentioned a bunch of times across many different videos over the years, and that is 1970's Equinox. Um, Equinox started out as a, uh, as a student film by Dennis Mirren. Dennis Mirren, best known for all the fucking Academy Awards he's won for Jurassic Park and Star Wars. Uh, this started as a student project for him. And he was convinced to turn it into a feature. And that meant going back and adding more scenes. Um, he, he worked with uh, a, a guy who would work with John Cassavetes a lot um, to shoot some more segments. You can tell as the movie's going on that sideburns get longer and shorter and hair gets longer and shorter. It's, uh, this movie was, a, was, a, um, was on my mind a lot when we were making Swamp Zombies 2. And there's a couple times when I directly referenced this movie in that movie. Um, they made the movie for six thousand five hundred dollars, and uh, it's it's basically Evil Dead by way of Ray Harryhausen. Obviously, this is uh, years before the Evil Dead was made by Sam Raimi and Rob Tappert and Bruce Campbell. But you can tell that this is a movie that uh, Raimi and Tappert and, and Sullivan had seen um, because there is just direct one to one uh, copies from this into Evil Dead. Uh, the movie is about a, um, uh, a guy who's hospitalized uh, after he, he's running from something. He gets run over by a car that's not driven by anybody and he winds up in the hospital and he's telling this, this wild story um, and a reporter shows up to, um, to record the story and, uh, and the story he's telling is about a group of friends who go out into the, the woods uh, to have a picnic uh, two guys, two gals, and they break down and find themselves uh, running afoul of of a park ranger named Osmodius. Um, <laughs> later on in the movie, they're like, wait a minute, I just realized in some languages, Osmodius means devil. I just realized that. It's been a long day. Um, and they find themselves in kind of this alternate dimension, which looks like our dimension, except there's some really cool... Uh, you know, uh, force perspective shots and um, and map paintings and comp, and comp shots and stuff like that. It's, it, the, this movie is essentially everything that Mirren and Co. learned from um, from uh, Famous Monsters magazine. Uh, anybody who knows Famous Monsters of Filmland, started by Forrest J. Ackerman. Um, you know, it's uh, it's it's where. You know, all the monster kids who grew up in the 1960s uh, up into the 80s, kind of where they fell in love with these things. You, you know, the Rick Bakers and, and, and such. That's where they kind of, and even like, you know, in other countries, you have somebody like uh, Peter Jackson loved Fa Famous Monsters Magazine. Um, you know, it says beautiful Basil Gogo's covers. I, I got them a lot secondhand, um, but I just so distinctly remember... You know, I, I said in my, if you go back a couple weeks, um, if you go back to my uh, uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon uh, 70th anniversary video, you have where um, there was this time in this place where the monsters were really prevalent again because of the Universal Monster package that was released to television. Um, so now you could see those classic Universal movies um, on your, on TV in the 1960s and such, and it, it, re it re-sparked the love for these things. And then when Ackerman came out with, with um, Famous Monsters Magazine, it, it started that again, but then it went into the sci-fi stuff, and there was a little bit of everything involved in it. And then rock and roll people got involved, like, you know, they got to a point where, like, Alice Cooper and Ozzy Osbourne were part of it. 
Um, and then Star Wars came out, and that was a huge thing because that ignited the sci-fi craze like nobody had ever seen before. So all these things came together and created this perfect storm. But what they used to do uh, with Famous Monsters is they would tell you there would be articles about how certain special effects were done. And um, they used to do these 8 millimeter reels that you could get, uh, which were made, that were like, you know, testing out a lot of these forced perspectives and stop motions. And you could tell that that's that directly what inspired uh, uh, Marin for this one. Um, Forrest J. Ackerman even helped them uh, with getting a cast together, which is really, really cool. Um, so this movie, uh, to me, has always been directly linked to Famous Monsters Magazine. There's a great picture of me with uh, Zandor Vorkov, the guy who played Dracula in, uh, in uh, 1971, Sam Sherman, Al Adamson's Dracula vs. Frankenstein, and his Dracula on the cover. It's, that's one that I have. Uh, and I got him to autograph and there's just a picture of me standing there with him with this big fucking shit-eating grin on my face And I've met some I've met some pretty famous people uh, In my day I've met people who also say that they're really famous um, But like he was one of those people that was like so fucking excited to meet and his wife just did not understand why I was so excited to meet him and and um, I don't know It's just one of those things like say they're like Candace Hillgross from uh, Carnival of Souls I was really, really excited to meet her, too, and she just didn't give a shit. Uh, as Rob Zombie said, he's like in uh, Going to Pieces, the rise and fall of the slasher film, which is a really cool documentary. He's like, you know, it's why you be nice to people, because you're going to forget about them the moment you walk away, but they're going to remember that meeting forever, and they're going to tell their friends if you were a jerk or not, you know, and I, I agree with that 100%, because all the years of going to cons or meeting fucking people in the wild and stuff like that, there's a couple people who were just super fucking cool. And granted, they meet, they meet dickheads like me a hundred times a day walking through lines and shit like that. And it's always the same song and dance. But there are people who are much better at faking it than others, I guess. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, meeting Dracula. I don't know. It was just super fucking cool. Um, but yeah, so they, they put this movie together for $6,500. Um, it extended beyond being a student film. They went back. They added more scenes. Uh, this movie is a direct influence on the Evil Dead. It's, a, it's also a direct influence on the Golden Child, the, uh, the Eddie Murphy movie. Uh, fun thing, one of the lead actors in it uh, would later go on to be in, in uh, WKRP in Cincinnati, which was a popular 1970s uh, sitcom. Uh, Ed Bagley Jr. worked behind the camera when he was young because his dad worked on the movie, and Bagley Jr. went on to be a pretty well-known actor in his own right. Um... Uh, this movie is best known, though, for those weird effects. You know, it takes a long time to get to them. You're like 40 minutes in before you kind of get what you came there to get, what's advertised on the poster. These people wander into this strange world. Osmodius is there, and he's telling them to go away. Uh, they, they wander into a, into a cave and where they meet an old man who's just giggling like a fucking scoundrel. And, um, and he gives them a book that he had hidden, in the, and the Book of the Dead, basically. And uh, they open it up near where they're eating their lunch, and it smells like sulfur and rot, you know, rotten eggs. And, uh, but when they're in the cave, um, the, you know, they have torches, and it's dark, so they just have... Because the whole movie is, is 80 yard. Everything in this movie is all done in post. Um, and we had a bunch of scenes in Swamp Zombies 2 where uh, we didn't film the shots that we needed, so we had to have the lights go out, and then you ADR'd myself and the other girl who was in those scenes with me, and I wrote them to be like the scene when the in this movie when the, uh, when the torches go out. Just like the same thing with my hair, the length of it kept changing because we filmed it over a couple months and I just didn't I didn't bother with the continuity of it. So I was like, well, I did it in, in Equinox and then people were like, what the fuck is Equinox? To which I say, it's one of the weirdest movies to ever get a Criterion release. And we'll reference uh, Candace Hillgross, um, Cardinal of Souls, great movie. It inspired George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. Fucking beautiful, eerie movie. Um, but that one also got a Criterion release and those are like two of the strangest ones you could think of for Criterion, but this one, Equinox has its place in history. Equinox, you know, you can you can tell that these people were would go on to do amazing fucking things. I mean, you don't get any bigger than 
you know, winning Academy Awards for fucking Star Wars and Jurassic Park, you know. Uh, there's a big, like, ape creature that's on the poster. Um, it's kind of big simian monster. Um, a lot of the guys who did stop motion on this movie would follow this up years later with uh, Flesh Gordon, which is like a softcore porn, not really parody comedy of Flash Gordon. Um, also, Craig T. Nelson from... Uh, Poltergeist, it was his first ever role, was doing the voice of one of the stop-motion monsters. But you can tell that they just copied their work in Equinox over to Flesh Gordon. Um, and little little connections like that, are, I just think, are so cool. This little, little fucking movie that cost $6,500 fucking dollars, you know, would go on to inspire Sam Raimi and, and, and you know, and, and Eddie Murphy with The Golden Child. And, and like, those, it's those little seeds that people uh grow it all out of this student film uh by dennis mirren and and that's the kind of stuff that is like the most inspiring to me as as a as a wannabe filmmaker is just this idea of this little fucking oh i i started reading famous monsters magazine like how it's like the butterfly flaps its wings in fucking trenton new jersey and it's felt in paris whatever i don't know how that that story goes um but yeah, this dude reading Famous Monsters magazine when he's in school goes, oh, I, I'm going to try that. And then somebody says, hey, we can get this on drive-in screens, you know, and now it's a movie. And now that movie plays in the drive-ins and plays on late night television. And then one of the actor, uh, actors involved in it go on to do other things. And special effects people go on to do big things in Hollywood. You know, even George Lucas referenced this movie before, um, you know, and, and, it's, and how it inspired people. Uh, and stuff like that is just so fucking cool how you could just see these little things like I always tell people like, you know Clerks made for $30,000 in a fucking convenience store goes on to be a global phenomenon where people travel from all over the country to uh, You know Leonardo, New Jersey to go see a convenience store You just you never know, you know, and this movie was filmed around Bronson Cave as well Which uh, you know 1960s it was where you know the Bat Cave uh, everybody's filmed there. Star Trek, the angry video game nerd movie. Um, you know, it's just one of those places that's just always, always used. Again, I have no fucking clue. Actually, it's, if I open the window, it's probably the big fucking simian monster from Equinox, given my luck of late. Um, but it's just people taking what they had and, and creating something out of it. And then something that still exists to this day, while it's probably not as well known, I think if anybody watched it, they would see when they get the book and he's reading from the book like you know it's basically the necronomicon because this movie is essentially a lot just like evil dead it is well uh it's a lot of lovecraft stuff all kind of stuck together to create a very loose narrative um you know because big portions of this movie are just fucking white people wandering around in the woods uh you know and and using like weird slang like uh when his friend calls him maestro um, not the Bradley Cooper movie, uh, but, uh, yeah, and then you get to the cool shit, like, when, you know, they're reading the book, and there's all these flashback scenes. There's all, you know, the narration of what's in the book is we're getting the, you know, and you have the book kind of spinning like it does in the beginning of Evil Dead 2, um, and then you get into these really cool shots of, like, again, every trick of the trade. You've got stop motion animation, you've got composite shots, you've got miniature shots, you know, you've got mirrored shots, you've got forced perspective, and it's all creating this other world um, with this cool weird castle up on the side of a hill, and, um, and you know, you've got this big stop motion monster, you've got, uh, you know, you've, you've got this fucking flying devil thing um, that's straight out of uh, the ending of... Um, the Golden Child, well, The Golden Child did it after this one did it. Except it flies, the, the cross seems to, the cross and the Star of David are like two things that can keep the devil away. So like the devil's like essentially Dracula. Um, and they keep using that on Osmodius. And then the one girl just, they know how important it is, but the one girl drops her cross and she's like, oh, well, I'm sure it's nothing. And then her ass gets possessed. Uh, but yeah, Asmodeus turns into um, a big fucking devil and is flying after them. And it's just like the ending of The Golden Child when the Frank Welker voiced devil is, is chasing after him. Uh, Sweet Brother Noomsie. I love that movie. If we have no, I don't know if I've, I don't remember if I've talked about that movie 
or not on this channel, but I fucking love that movie. I deserve to be flogged, my brother. Um, you know, and that that's another movie that was originally supposed to be uh, Golden Child. It was supposed to be directed by John Carpenter, and then he dropped out to do a very, very similar movie in uh, in Big Trouble in Little China. They, they're, they're almost like, uh, you know, they could be cousins, those two movies. Um, but yeah, so the, the devil flies right into like a big fucking stone crucifix in a graveyard and, and explodes, and you're like, what did you expect to happen, you know? Um, I guess the devil has no peripheral vision when he's up in the air deviling. Um, you got this really cool, uh, like, dude as a, like, a caveman. He's like a green-skinned caveman who's out there swiping him around. They do some neat force perspective stuff. Um, you know, it feels like the, like, like, budget Harryhausen. And, and that is so neat that it, I mean, it took them years to get this movie finished. But still, it's just like, you, you can tell the personal touch that's there. Um, you know, and, and that it has resonated with monster kids over the years and with late night, uh, you know, late night, um, TV people. And it's popped up on a lot of like Elvira's and Sven Ghoulies and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know, I, I, it's special. It's, it's not great, you know, it's not, but I mean, what's ever stopped me from not talking about not great movies on, on this channel before, but it is just one of those ones where you look at it and you're like, that's charming as fuck. And it's also like awesome to see where these people started and they, you know, they, again, Dennis Marin going like, well, I'm going to go make this movie and it'll be fun. I'm going to do it with my friends. Next thing you know, you're working on Star Wars. Like you never know where, where it's going to start and where it's going to end unless you go out and you actually try it to make your own movie. And it's, it's really cool. I really, I really dug rewatching this again because I saw it for the very first time. On late night TV, uh, Stella, the man eater from Maniunk, and I live in Maniunk, PA. Uh, she was our Philadelphia. Um, I'm, I'm sure I've talked about this a lot. You guys probably hear shit, and you're like, "Oh my god," he just repeats himself. Um, the uh, the she was our late night horror host on uh, Channel Six, I believe it was, or Channel Three in Philly. Um, back when there was like kids. Younger kids, you know, you guys don't know. There's only like a handful of fucking channels back in the day. And, um, but, uh, yeah, and I remember seeing this, but I, I didn't, I only remembered like fragments of it. And then it was years later, I went to a show in Philly. There was a late night, uh, triple feature, and this was one of the movies. And I just had that kind of like, oh my God, like I remember this movie, but I didn't remember where from. I remembered Osmodeus' big fucking eyebrows was one of the things I remembered. And then certain, of the stop motion monsters and stuff and just it, it always stuck with me but I never I could never remember what the movie was called um and uh yeah and there it was and then I got the criterion for it and I watched it a couple times um but I was like what can I talk about that would be kind of cool and and exciting for me I don't fucking care what the audience thinks uh but I was just like oh you know I know you know I'm gonna watch um I'm gonna watch Equinox because I was in an Evil Dead mood, and and this is kind of like Evil Dead's grandpappy. So uh, yeah, Equinox, man, it's it's a it's a weird one. It's super low budget. All the edges show on it, but it is if you're a a monster kid, if you're a uh, a fan of grassroots little rascals, let's put on a fucking show style filmmaking. I think this is one that you'll dig just for the sheer ingenuity that it shows and and that's um that's that's something cool for me that's something exciting for me and and a movie that i'll i'll always return to um because you know you follow like in football they have the coaching tree like you know if, some, if somebody is a coach like the people who worked for them got jobs and those people got jobs and it shows like how it expands and this is like one of those things where it's like you look at it and you look at the people who are involved and what they went on to do and what that inspired as I've said a million, I'm just repeating myself over and over again. But uh, it's just something you think about. Again, it's like this little this little stop motion movie idea based on a magazine um, that somebody was a big fan of and, and it became a thing that now some dickhole in Philadelphia, uh, you know, 50 years later is, is talking about in his living room, so. There you go, Equinox, uh, and uh, yeah, so um, yeah, trying to stay ahead of the schedule, like I said, 
Uh, check this one out. It's streaming on it's it's streaming on um, on HBO Max, but it's also free if you put it in YouTube. You can find it, and um, I'm sure there's a bunch of fucking trivia that I left out uh, because I just I just start talking and just ramble about what's what I know off the top of my head. Sometimes I'll take notes. If you go back and you watch, I'll go like, okay, there's things I can't forget to say. And then there's other times where I'm just like, we're just flying by the fucking seat of our pants, man. And that's what we're doing today. We're flying by the seat of our pants. Um, so Equinox. I should have waited. I could have put this up in June and used it as the, uh, as the summer Equinox video. Um, but who knows if I'll still be around then. <laughs>